let's watch the video. I think th I think this is actually reacting to a Bellular video, plus Asmgold's take, and then I'll give you my take also. Here we go. Apparently, the new WoW expansion is dead. Okay. It hasn't even come out yet, but oh. it's dead. Uh -oh. Are you interested in finding out how they've ruined the War Within already? Oh, already? <laughs> uh oh. I'm going to move my webcam here. There we go. Okay, there we go. Here we go. That's good. That's okay. impressive. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing, they have continually <laughs> said it's not class skins. Yeah. Now, but, I think they yeah, had a problem but... where it felt like class skins in some of their earliest marketing. But since uh -huh. then, I have noticed they've continually said these are not class skins. These are ways to lean into a certain vibe with your class. That's right. It. They have specifically multiple times said it's not class skins. So it's that sort of weird thing where if we just sort of go and say they're not class skins, everyone, I'm so angry about this. Blizzard be like, we, we never, we didn't say they were class skins. We, in fact, multiple times. Mu multiple interviews told you all that they're not class skins. Could you please stop judging them as if they're class skins? So it's that weird thing of like, what do a lot of people want? Class skins. Um, this is not, that's not what this is. Yeah. I don't even know what that. a class skin is. But the problem is. is, they, you know, uh, for some reason, right, I was, I was just, I was, that's a fit analogy. It's like brown rice versus white rice. This is like a classic retail complaint. I, I, I feel like so much of the retail discussion is not even about like the content or the gameplay. It's just like, we need more cosmetics. We need more cosmetics. Very rarely do you ever see people complaining about the actual gameplay content or gameplay loops within the retail community. Of course, I have problems. I think a lot of us classic players maybe have problems with the retail gameplay loops or the retail gameplay itself. But as far as retail players go, their biggest concern seems to be like cosmetic, cosmetic stuff, co co collection stuff. I know the brown rice has still got the germ in it, <clears throat> whatever, or whatever it is, so it's technically healthier. No, it's not. But Great. Yeah, I actually heard that brown rice is actually not healthier than white rice, and brown rice is harder to digest and the whole idea that brown rice is more healthy than white rice is complete bullshit and it's not even true. And it's actually made me reconsider my entire Chipotle order, which is a big part of my day. And uh, I don't really know if I'm going to do that or not, but... So do you, do you guys want to know a fun fact about rice? I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to give you guys the absolute rice pill, okay? This is a grain of rice. This is a grain, this is a, a grain of white rice. This, this is brown rice, and it's a brown layer. Every single bit of brown rice actually is also white rice. Brown rice is white rice that has not had its brown husk removed. Did you guys know that? No, no, this actually is true. White rice is brown rice that has been dehusked or like, like skinned almost. You put it through a rice tumbler and then it knocks off the brown, the brown part. So every single brown rice is white rice. So the difference between white and brown rice is that the, br the brown husk that you can take off has fiber and has protein. So, any, so the reason why people say that brown rice is healthier is because it has more fiber and more protein, which are things that I, I think probably most people want. But to be clear, brown rice has everything that white rice also has, but white rice does not have everything that brown rice has. But it is true. Like at 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 its origin point, it is it is actually the same thing. White rice is just dehusked. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna be moving over to white rice. Yeah. Oh wow. Brown rice is next. Fantastic. Material. Well, I was always told brown rice was healthier. Yeah, I, I was too. Thought, I was too. I forgot who it was that told me it was fucking bullshit. Like, it was pretty recently. Screw that. What okay. do I want? White I don't think rice. so. How do I want it? Sticky as fuck in my gullet. Immediate blood sugar. Let's go. Cooking chicken stock. Let's go. So it's that kind of thing where you're like, hey, Michael, would you like this? You know, something delicious thing with rice. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go. Because I'm excited about that thing. I sit down. It's like it's brown rice. It's overdone. It's not clumped together. I'm like, oh. I remember when I was uh, working on farms in Japan. Uh, at this, I guess this is like this, like, like Japanese tradition, I guess. I don't know. Every, every family. I was living with like 10 different, 10, maybe 15 different Japanese farm families. When it came to be dinner time or breakfast time, they're having rice. The kids ate white rice and the elderly people, the old people, adults ate brown rice. I guess kids, it's like, you know, maybe white rice is like, like more kid friendly. It tastes better maybe. But then all the, all the adult, all the adults in the countryside ate brown rice with every meal. And then they gave the white rice to the kids because kids are like pickier, I guess. But anyway, that's how they did it. Oh. 
So it's a bit like that with class skins. Yeah, well, Tell Joshua never asks, what are you guys talking about? Good question, actually. We should maybe we should maybe make that more clear. Okay, so hero <coughs> hero specs. Hero specs. They may. Uh -oh. oh no, I feel. Oh, but that's just one of those things where it's like. So this is the way it is, right? And like these are basically like kind of subclasses. It's like I would say, uh, okay. ascendancies and Poe. They're adding this into WoW, where it's like server. each class spec can be like two of the three. Astrologian. I want. Yeah, I wonder where they got that from. You know, you don't know that people are going to get that idea because they haven't got that idea because mm -hmm. it hasn't happened yet. That sounds completely insane. That's actually just me talking about. Co what can I can I go through these Death Knight Rider of the Apocalypse? So these are like like he like hero hero specs you can play in the new retail expansion. Death Knight Rider of the Apocalypse, Sand Lane, Deathbringer, Demon Hunter, Aldraki, Aldrachi Reaver, Felsgard, Druid, Keeper of the Grove, Elune's Chosen, Windstalker, Druid of the Claw. Evoker, Chrono Warden, Ruby Adept, Scale Commander. Evoker is just so uh, lame. Demon Hunters are cool. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just just against everything new. I'm not like, hey, new thing, bad. No, no. I like Demon Hunters. Demon Hunters actually are cool, but evo Evokers are just fucking lame. They're just lame. <coughs> Hunter, Sentinel, Pack Leader, Dark Ranger. That could be cool, Dark Ranger. I'm thinking like Warcraft Three vibes. Mage, Sun Fury, Frostfire, Spell Slinger. Monk, Master of Harmony, Shadow Pan, Conduit. Yeah, okay. So anyway, this is the age-old question. What what is stupider, Evoker or Monk? It's pro honestly probably Monk. Probably Monk, to be honest. Paladin, Lightsmith, Herald of the Sun, Templar, Priest, Voidweaver, Oracle, Archon. They're both stupid. Rogue, Deathstalker, Trickster. Trickster, Fatebound. I'm a little trickster. Shaman, Stormbringer, Farseer, Totemic. That's cool. Warlock, Soul Harvester, Hellcaller, Diabolist. Diabolist. Um, that's crazy. Warrior, Colossus, Slayer, Mountain. It's hard to know exactly. Like you can, you can kind of guess like what it's going to be like for Warlock. Soul Harvester is probably Affliction. Hellcaller is probably Destro, and Di Diabolist is probably Demonology, right? Demons and stuff. Okay, you can kind of take some educated guesses. Causality. <laughs> We're fire. not violating causality, but like, yeah. They, so they call them this, and I suppose for people are like, oh yeah, Hellcaster, Hellcaller. I really want to be Templar. I really want to be. Yeah, it's McConnell. Rider of the Apocalypse. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. That's oh, wow. Shit. Rider of the Apocalypse? Hell yeah. Do you guys that? think these are going to be cool, these hero specs? Because, like, I think they could be cool, but my concern is that I think that if Blizzard tries to make them cool, it won't be balanced. And Retail WoW is for a bunch of, like, try-hard nerds. Like, that's what True. Retail WoW is all about. It's not about True. having fun. It's not about the game class fantasy or anything like that. It's about, you know, making sure that you're able to AoE down a trash pack of mobs while you're continuously stunning them in a Mythic Plus dungeon at level 27 uh, efficiently. So I just can't imagine this being interesting. I That's mean, true. Mountain Thane sounds really cool. I'll be honest. What do I think is the coolest one out of all of this? <clears throat> Rider of the Apocalypse. Most certainly as the game progresses, it, it, it becomes harder and harder and harder to balance, right? From a, from a class balance or spec balance point of view, the more things they do like this, the more classes they add, they add hero spec lists, the game just gets increasingly harder and harder and harder to balance in a proper way. Because now it's like, now we don't have to make sure that all of, all of the classes and specs are... Now, now you have to make sure that, that, a, that a destruction soul harvester is balanced in the same way that a destruction hellcaller is balanced. It's, ba it's a, lot, a lot of variables to, to try to mix and match. This one, in my opinion, is cooler than all of the other ones probably put together. So if I can't be a Warcraft 2 Death Knight whenever I have the Rider of the Apocalypse thing, I'm out. Be yeah, I'm out. Fan? Yeah, that's like the fucking hero from Warcraft 3. Give me that shit. Rider of the Apocalypse. Can I, can I go on Warcraft logs? I want to see how balanced is retail. Uh, War, Warcraft logs. Hopefully I can just see this uh, real fast. Okay. Um, Dragonflight. We can do... Pro okay, um, should, should I do All-Stars DPS or just DPS? I'm just going to do DPS probably. And we're going to do... Oh, oh, that's actually exactly what I wanted uh, right here. We're looking at the 95th percentile. Dude, this is actually... 
This is astoundingly balanced. Obviously, Subtlety Rogue is a little bit retarded. This is this is astounding. Like I I I am actually shocked at how balanced this is. Wow. Uh okay, let me let me go to let me go to Max. This is retail. This is crazy. I was not expecting this. Wow. Sub rogue is obviously fucking nuts. Uh, let me go to 50th percentile. These are your average players. I am so shocked. This is over the last two weeks. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to to heroic raid difficulty. Let's go to 95th percentile. So if you go to heroic raid difficulty, it gets a little bit a little bit more curved here, but man, like still. This is this is actually crazy. I don't know. I guess you have to hand it to the retail class balance team. This is this is just astounding. It could be a rad death knight. It could be a it awesome could be, yeah. scale commander. It sounds yeah. like a bitch. You know, you be a Maybe they can do it. I don't know. Maybe they can. Oh, wow. Sun Fury. How much you want to bet that Farsi or shamans will still have a forty yard spell range? Dark Ranger Hunter. I think we're yes. going to talk a little bit about Dark Ranger so actually, because that's the one that's... What, what this is? 45, is 42, 45, hell yeah. Level uh, 60 to 70. 70 to 80. <laughs> you play this game, Michael. <laughs> Don't answer that, honestly. Um, uh, yeah, so here's what they are. They're talent trees. They're mini talent trees that you have access to on top of your existing talent mm -hmm. trees. I think they're cool. I actually do need to... I, I, meaning, I thought they were cool, and then I looked at the balance red one, and my brain went, uh, abort mission, get sure. in here. Talk about playing WoW as, as a next topic. Because I'm continually seizing because I've not been able to play enough because I've basically just been trying to solve problems and make things good here. But it's actually getting to the point where I, I go home and there's like two things in my head. It's make a really good Notion template and play World of Warcraft. And I keep having to do the Notion template because that's useful for like other people here. But I'm like, oh. and then me, me and Zach were, we've been talking about like, God, you know what would be really cool? just having fun in wow and for him instead of all the sweat stuff so maybe i actually do want to talk i about think retail wow is so uh -huh. far down the sweat this the the, the <clears throat> sweat path that it will never become a non-sweat game again like if they want to make the game no longer a sweaty game they need to make it to where the api can't read like you can't read anything with an add-on with an api mm. because that's really where the problem comes from is like everything in WoW is like so hyper fixated around being like optimized because everybody has like 75 different tools for how to play the game. And like everything in the game is like such an, like doing a raid is such an abstraction from doing a normal raid from like back in the day. I can't tell what's going on here. This must be retail. Yeah, this is retail. And so we're just gonna pause this. That's retail. And look at it. What the fuck is going on? He has a lot of fucking overlays here. There is a lot going on. He's tracking timers there. He's tracking a timer there. These are his uh, his spells and abilities. These are his big cooldowns, I think. This is the Mythic Plus Dungeon information, level 29 Mythic. These are his buffs. There's timers there. There's his party frames there. There's a timer there. There's some timer there. There's his HP in the... There's more timers there. I'm gonna be honest, man. Like, is this actually useful? Like, is is he is he actually monitoring all of all of this? Like, is 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 his brain actually able to 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 keep track of all of these things? And then and then like, it's 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 relaying the information to him, and then he's reacting to what he sees from these overlays. That's a lot of shit, bro. That's a lot of shit. Now you can you can call me a classic wow boomer, dad gamer, retard, and you know what? That's true. But I'm going to give you my opinion anyway. I love the. There's different types of sweat. I love the vanilla wow sweat. I love that the raids are easy. Everyone can do them. It's accessible. There's only one difficulty, and then if you want to be sweaty on top of that, you've got Darkwing Fair Week, and that's when you do your speed run. I love that. If you if you want to sweat, the option is there, and that's a speed run with your world buffs, with your guild, and you're preparing all month for that one week, and then you and then you do it and see how it goes, and then you do it again a month later. I I love that. To me, vanilla WoW has like is like the 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 perfect type of sweat. That's my preferred type of sweat. This is just fucking nuts. And if you've played the game a lot, you know exactly what the fuck is going on. 
Like this is obviously tracking all of the internal cooldowns of all of the different classes. These are their debuffs. This is, I'm assuming, probably an interrupt rotation. This is the spell cast of, uh, I guess, the target that's on their focus. Um, this is the, uh, the the mob here. Like this is all the debuffs and the Yo, buffs Chris, as well. Doing? Like these are his spells. Those are damage done and the damage done for the different pack. Like I mean, you you know what all of this is if you played the game a lot. But at the end of the day, think about how much different this is versus. <clears throat> just what the game looks like without any of this like you you go and you look at this like this is just me doing bwl there's not as much shit going on this is classic wow right it's, it's pretty simple to understand comparatively now obviously i have like a big dps meter up but there's really not a lot going on mm -hmm. comparatively now obviously if you've never played the game both of these things look relatively impenetrable but in my opinion, I would say that the uh, retail WoW is just, with add-ons and everything, it's just too much, man. You see all these overlays here on the screen? Back to the retail screen. You have all these, oh, you have these oh, different fucking overlays relaying additional information to you. In-game, do you think we will have a virtual reality meta? This year, five years, ten years from now, where everyone has their fucking VR goggles on. And as you walk through downtown or you're walking around your house, you have overlays just like this being projected onto your eyeballs through the fucking VR goggles. You have timers, you have cooldowns, you have the, this is the microwave timer. You have the fucking uh, Uber Eats cooldown. You have the, like, you have the T minus five minutes till the home gets, till, till, the, till the wife gets home from work. You got to get all your shit done before the wife is home. Tracking down, and you're you're like you're you're it's it's like tracking her location, and you can see exactly estimated time of return. It's like oh fuck, I gotta I gotta take the garbage out before the wife is home. I got the garbage timer. I've got the fuck. dude. Probably, probably. It's just too much, man. Uh, in a little bit. It's but anyway, these too much. Specs, yeah. Uh, sorry for breaking flow on you, everyone. Uh, yeah, they're basically they're, they're yep they're that you you talked about them. And it's like somebody... I feel like a good here's like really what the bottom line is. Why would I want to play that? Like, if I'm a new player, how could I possibly see that and be like, oh, this is fun. This is what I want to get involved with. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. It will be better than others. Blizzard. Or We're kind of touching on this idea that I've that has occurred to me in regards to Chris Metzen. Everyone loves Chris Metzen. Chris Metzen is coming back to Retail WoW. We're talking about he released his his three expansion story arc that we're planning. It's going to be awesome. Chris Metzen is a big picture story lore type of guy. I don't think Chris Metzen handles the gameplay at all. I don't think Chris Metzen is is balancing classes or making uh, dungeons really. Or he's he's not doing dungeon design or raid design. He's like a story and lore guy. He's a thematic guy, and so. I don't, m most, most of you guys, myself, like my problem is not, is it's not really the story of the game. I kind of, the, the story is secondary to the actual gameplay. And so even if Chris Metzen comes back and makes the story the best it's ever been, it's a, it's the sickest lore of all time. It's like, well, is the gameplay still kind of how it's been for the last decade? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm still probably not going to play that much. Overtly said. I do want to be fair to them. They overtly said that they want to get the designs for these out mm -hmm. early uh, and they want feedback. to do that yeah. so they can iterate heavily. They mm -hmm. even said, like, if you think that some of these ideas... Somebody says, when you think about the same thing about PoE? No, because if you watch somebody playing PoE, you will have the fundamental same experience as they do. Like, mm. for example, is there somebody actually just doing a map? There's this just a guy doing a map. Okay, so... Okay, yeah, this is a lot different than normal PoE. Um, anyway, like the, the potions are in the same place. The spells are in the same place. There's a health bar and a mana bar. Like fundamentally, if you've played PoE, you are having the same experience as somebody who is. Can I tell you something? I had this realization like probably like five or six years ago, browsing through different World of Warcraft streams. If I open a World of Warcraft stream and they have a completely just deranged, abnormal, fucked up UI, they've used add-ons to, everything is in a different spot. That's actually kind of a turnoff because as a viewer on Twitch, I've got to spend a minute or two just sort of like deciphering the riddle that is this streamer's UI. I'm, I'm just like, okay, hold up. Where's the HP bar? Where are the cool, where are the spells and abilities? Where, like, like where's the mini map? Where's the damage meter? You have to like think,
And I, I feel like that's a big burden to put on a Twitch viewer. I feel like it's kind of prohibitive. And so this is a long time ago. I decided, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep my UI as basic as I possibly can. Because I feel like if I have a basic UI, viewers are going to have more in common with that than if I have some crazy retarded advanced UI. That was actually a very intentional, to this day, that's an intentional decision. And I, th I, think, I think that actually makes a lot of sense. Maybe I'm being, uh, I don't know, like a little bit anal retentive about it, but I think that actually is true. Mm, are you whispering me? Oh my God, it's evil Morse. My name is Morse. This is my evil twin. Leave me alone. You are, you, you are, you are evil. You are evil in all caps. Okay, I'm logging out. That guy's crazy. Of course he's a rogue also, of course. Playing the game on stream. Now, obviously, if you know a lot about the game, it's going to be completely different. But the disparity between what somebody sees in like a top player UI in WoW versus what an average person is experiencing, these are two completely different games. And I think it's so much the case that it becomes impenetrable for a new player. Because there's a reason why these players have all those tools and those resources. It's because those increase their awareness and make them better at the game. I'm like a fantasy <clears throat> Arlene, So people feel like us. they need to have there it. Like, they they literally said that at BlizzCon. Some of the Warlock, what? Soul Harvester, Hellcolor, Diabolist? What Diabolist. What the fuck is this Conduit of the Celestials? Lightning Rod? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Sure, fine. Well, you know, you can immediately tell there's some of these that aren't that exciting. Basically. Yeah, and they, I think, knew some of that themselves. That's why they yeah, asked for feedback. So yeah, like, this, is some, this is some first draft shit. Yeah. It's to say that they were fairly open and they were overtly receptive to feedback. And Why do you think that Blizzard has never done a Necromancer type of deal in World of Warcraft? I feel like Necromancer is one of the most beloved character archetypes. Am amongst like RPG nerds, everyone loves Necromancers, bro. They're fucking awesome. Necromancers are cool. Why have they not done that? Why, do why don't they do that? I don't know. And they continually said that they're not DK. Games. But it's like kind of, it's like not all the way there though, right? Overlap with I guess what I'm saying is like, maybe Necromancer should have been one of the, one of the hero specs here. That would have, I think that would have made it like, like maybe now's the time to do it. That would have been cool. An ideal version of the thing. Oh, you know why? Bro, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think that probably is why in China they can't have skeletons. They will not tolerate any sort of skeleton bone necromancer architecture or monsters. You guys have seen some of the comparisons, right? That probably is what it is. That we all can agree would be really awesome if they could do it. Yeah. And it has enough of an overlap that it then conjures in your They can't do it. They can't do it because the game is built so much around balance. They are, Blizzard is too fixated on making the game balanced in order to make it fun. They will never add something into the game that's fun to play unless it's balanced. Like, you're not going to have a situation where, like, you had Death Knights and, like, Wrath. Or you had, uh, you know, like, even, like, Warriors and Classic Yo, thank WoW. you. And, like, not that even you really want that, but it's just not, they're not going to do anything that's, like, really groundbreaking. Like, even Demon Hunters and Legion were crazy. <clears throat> Can I tell you something, Seymour? I was just, I was just, uh, saluting. We went up to the new house today. Did you call me a go- No, sorry, doing. What, what that do gooing? Sorry, I heard something else, sorry. Hey, Dory, thank you, Dory. Thank you, Tori, thank you. We were up at the new house today, and, uh, we were pulling into the driveway. We were, uh, we were un unloading some boxes, and Kathy said, you know what? I want to have an American flag on our house. I said, what? Huh? Really? She said, yeah, I want to get a flagpole and I want to dangle an American flag from the front of our house. And I said, yeah. I said, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Hell yeah. This woman has been Americanized. She wants my immigrant wife. She wants an American flag on the front, on the front porch. And what a full dark Hell yeah. sub spec or something would be. Yeah, and this yeah. is exactly why I've seen, I've seen it be uh, connected to Garrison's too, in the sense that it's like, <clears> this is it's not even like it's trying to be. It's literally just, this is kind of... Well, augmentation is a great example. Like, augmentation completely split the community and people are furious about it. Like, I hear all the time that, like, nobody likes augmentation of ochres because they're not, uh, they're not just, like, raw DPS and everybody feels like they need to have them. Nobody asks for augmentation. A lot of people have wanted support classes ever since Vanilla WoW they have. That's not true.
we can't commit to giving you exactly what you want for whatever reason. Yeah, time when I think of support class, I think of the bard. There's always people that are, that are that are wanting to have the bard class, the bard support class. I'm going to have a loot and I'm going to use my musical abilities to buff the party and I'm going to be, while you guys are fighting the boss, I'm going to be prancing around the battlefield, enchanting you with my tunes. Plus 10% attack power. 20% spell power for 30 seconds. People actually want that. People have been asking that for, for fucking 20 years. Tons of people want that. Through. We could have just had class skins that are completely optional set exchanges, but instead you're forcing them to options that might not fit. And now, we could have just had is a massively loaded statement because it's like, what's your source for? We could have just had. But from the player perspective and experience, you go, well, would you rather have some extra gameplay choices that are in here? It's like, yeah, they want to increase power. They want to give us more talents. And this is their solution. Their solution was, we can make mini talent trees, but we have to frame them in some capacity. Oh, this is a good, a good idea to add little bits of tiny bits of fantasy. Yeah. So we can create effectively what are really miniature subspecs. And we'll have those subspecs shared because we kind of like a little bit of that. Just have them mm -hmm. shared. Makes more sense. We don't have to do one individually. We can like make them kind of work across so you can have access to these um, these aesthetics and these kind of, not class skins, but these these abilities, right? So obviously if you want to be a Dark Ranger, that's for BM and for Marksmanship Hunter. So like, you want to be a Dark Ranger? Yeah, you can be a Dark Ranger without oh. locked into one specific spec. That's cool. What is Dark Ranger? Eh, black Arrow and a couple things. I think the problem is someone goes, well, do you want to be a Dark Ranger or do you want to be a... Somebody says, how would I do it? I think that the problem isn't really... There's like, there's no one thing that's wrong. Like Retail WoW has evolved in a way that it's like a house of cards. So like if you change one thing in the game, it will negatively affect a lot of other <clears> things <throat> in the game. I think that the game needs like a, I think it needs a really big reset. I think there's Ooh. too much of everything. I actually like the idea of the hero specs and it's something that I always thought would be really cool. But I think with a lot of them, they're not going to take risks. Like, I, I don't know why, like why are priests, why do they not have like a um, occultist one where it's like a melee priest that runs really fast or something? I think that would be way cooler than Oracle. I mean, personally, I think it would be cooler. Um, they need retail while sees no discovery. We need to discover how to have fun in retail WoW. Oh my God. And so some of these other ones, like, yeah, is there a witch doctor? Yeah, there should be a witch doctor for a shaman. Absolutely. Or a warlock, one or the other. I don't know. Like, I just... Like, there's not an inquisitor from a paladin? <clears throat> How is there not an inquisitor? I don't know, man. I think a lot of people are positive on retail, at least versus the after the other previous expansions. I mean... Sure, but to me, like, I feel like I can't get into the game because there's so many things that are in the game. Like, there's just so much to it. And I've never really, f I, like, I don't feel that way with Lost Ark. I don't feel that way with Final Fantasy. I don't feel that way with New World. But, like, WoW just has, like, all of these extra, like, verticals of difficulty that, like, no other game has. A shadow pine, and just, uh, not even uh, difficulty, like, complexity. What have people had in their heads for these specs, these kind of additional aesthetic addition to classes all these aesthetic overrides of things because one of the things they pointed out was do you think like would would wow be better if they just got rid of mythic rating and told sweaty players to fuck off I, i'm like i i don't really care i'm just asking you guys do you think that they should reduce the 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 skill cap on retail wow all of you guys are saying yes. Well, you guys are watching a classic stream, so you guys are all a bunch of boomer fucking dad gamer retards. So, uh, so obviously, you guys are scared of hard content. You guys are scared of some, of challenging content, of course. You just can't handle it. Literally changes abilities, gives them more of that vibe. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it was. It was like there's more lightning during thunderclap. You can thunderclap a lot more. There's uh, what is it? Is it like stormbolt splits and hits like three targets with lightning blast as well? Wow. And stuff like that. You're like that's kind of crazy. That's that, that's that feels like a tiny version of what we could have with a full overhaul. And that's what oh. we need, like this really full um I want to I want to see the mythic uh participation drop off. Okay, so how how can we do this? We can go go back 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 back. I'm just in a loop. Okay. Um if I hit this Okay, we're there we go. Okay. So if we do if we do progress <sighs> no report. Yeah, yes. Yes. Okay. So this is mythic, and I want to compare this to normal and to heroic. This is normal, and then heroic is in the middle. Okay, so 
How many kills do we have for Fyrak on normal? 11,640. Okay. For Heroic, we have 9,637. And then Mythic, we have 414. Holy shit. What, what, about, what, about, what about first boss? Let's talk first boss. Like, dude, not a lot of people are, are completing Mythic. There's not, a, and and by the way, this raid came out. How many? When did this raid come out? November twenty sixth. Uh, what? Three months ago. Three months ago. In three months, only four hundred and fourteen. That's because it's super duper hard. It's super duper spooper hard. Okay, so on normal, there are eleven thousand eight hundred and forty four kills, uh, for the first boss on normal. Heroic. Wait, eleven thousand eight hundred seventy nine. Oh, dude. There's actually a higher first boss kill count on Heroic. Wow, I guess, I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, and so and so yeah, so actually the the biggest number that we see is Gnarl Root, Gnarl Root first boss eleven thousand eight hundred seventy nine. Amazing. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, what is the average raid size on retail? We on retail? Wow, like. Probably like like twenty people. So if you do eleven thousand uh, eight hundred and seventy nine eight seven nine times twenty players, you have two hundred and thirty seven thousand characters. Not necessarily individual people, but characters that have killed this boss over the last three months. Amazing. Can I can I compare that to like SOD real fast? Just out just out of curiosity. And of course, there's more nuanced because you know. People are playing alts. How many people have alts in SOD versus how many people have alts in retail? I don't know. There's no way to know that for a fact. But I just, I'm just curious. I want to compare numbers here. Um, okay. So, and then we do. Let's let's do let's do because this patch just came out two weeks ago. Let's actually do. Let's do Black Fathom Deeps. It's probably going to be a little bit more fair here. That phase just wrapped up. Okay. So. You had, <clears throat> keep in mind, the, the retail number was 237,000 characters that have killed the first boss on Heroic Difficulty, which is the biggest number. Okay, so 237580. I'm going to put that in the chat. Thank you. And then let's do, I don't know, um, let's take a look at this. Okay, so, so. Every every raid here has ten people, so you can I don't know eight uh, two six seven. Though though, if you want to be super fair, I think you have to add six seventeen thirteen fourteen twenty three. Let's 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 add a hundred, okay? Because we're comparing first boss to last boss. Okay, let's do let's do eight thousand three hundred and sixty seven, probably ballpark. Um, eight three six seven times ten. Okay, this many characters, approximately. Have killed, um, have 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 cleared Black Fathom deeps. Well, it's that's actually not. It's probably more. Like, probably more like eighty thousand. I did it wrong. Let's shave off that hundred again. It's eighty eighty thousand characters or so have cleared Black Fathom deeps. Something like that. Insane. Uh, let me keep playing the video here. Anyway, the 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 point is, the takeaway is like not not as many people are rating and retail as I would have guessed not like 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 by far actually way fewer people are rating than I would have guessed I guess I guess the counter argument is that maybe there's a lot of people that play retail and don't raid and they only do mythic plus all they do is mythic plus and they never raid that's the counter argument but I don't know to what degree that is true. I would I would guess that if you care enough to do Mythic Plus, you are also probably raiding to some degree. Mythic Plus numbers are nutty, are they? Let me let me take a look here. Um. Okay, I only go back to retail, so I don't even know how to check that. For me, maybe I'm totally out of touch. I have a hard time believing that there are people that do Mythic Plus and never raid. I have a I have a hard time imagining that. But maybe I'm just completely out of touch. Uh, Mythic Plus Season Three. Okay. Um, what's I've never checked this before. What's What's the best way to look at this? Mythic Plus Season Three. All reports. No. What if I do rankings? Uh. 
I don't even know how to check this. There were 1.2 million uh, runs last week. Uh, okay, and, and so th those are individual characters. Um, wait a minute. Okay, so so hold up. If there if there were 1.2 million runs, is is that is that is that is that one point? Hold up. Do you mean 1.2 million characters, or do you mean 1.2 million? five man dungeon groups in which case we'd have to multiply by five to get an actual character count what are you talking about 1.2 million five mans okay so that means that, ju that that just about six million individual characters are doing mythic plus per week and then who knows how many you know who knows how many people are playing on alts i don't know i'm gonna play the video there's like <clears throat> i guess basically it is just nature people wanting a thing and not getting it direct oh yeah that's actually true you can do multiple runs. On one character, you could do 15 Mythic Dungeons a week. 15 Mythic Plus Dungeons, you could do 20 Mythic Plus Dungeons a week, right? That is actually really true, whereas raids are having a lockout. Okay, right. whatever. I'm stuff moving stuff on. I don't care, lot. whatever. Yeah. But it's not supposed to be that. But it still takes away from that. Yeah, because I don't care. the problem with the player looking at this, this is, this is cool, but I wanted this. And they're like, we were never offering you that as a binary choice. But it's almost like, hey, you're hungry? Well, here's some, like, here, here's a bottle of Lucas it. <laughs> and you're like, sure, the sugar in that. Sure, but I was hungry, not thirsty. It, it is of type consumable. Yeah. But it is not of subtype food. Therefore, I'm unsatisfied. Yeah, it's so, someone's <laughs> yeah, hungry. Yeah, that's you a good them, way to look at it. You don't give them something to eat. You give them something to drink that's reasonably nutritious. Something along the lines of, well, like a Gatorade in the US or else. Or like, cool, that's not it. Prime that's energy. Like, we're offering you food. So sorry, like, go, going through our um, statistics. And all the Blizzard doesn't understand after the failures of the past of player power connected systems, it's constant half measures instead of giving players what they're asking for. I just, I think there's like too many variables. Like every, every class has too many variables. And Blizzard dialed a lot of that back with Dragonflight. And I think it was a good decision to do that. But like, even now, there's just too many things that are in the game. I, I, I honestly, I'm not kidding whenever I think Whenever I say, I think one of the best things for the game would be for them to reset the game completely. Reset the mechanics, reset the, the class design, reset everything. Because I feel like the game has just been so over-designed for so many years. Like, for example, like, there's like a disorient, and there's also a sap. And then... Here's the problem with that. I feel like a lot of people play retail WoW these days as a result of sunken cost fallacy. Meaning, I feel like maybe they're not even having a ton of fun, but they're logging in and playing the game out of habit. They say, oh, well, I've been playing retail WoW for 15 years, right? I've got all these mounts, I've got all these pets, I've got all of these appearances and cosmetics, and if they reset and I don't have any of that shit, then maybe maybe that's a good time to step away from it, right? Um, I, fe I feel like a lot of people are just playing because they have such a big investment and it's, ju it's just what they've done. Like it's just been a huge part of their life and they've been building this character or this account for 15 20 years that if it was over it'd be over for them incapacitate there's a hex and then there's a polymorph this is insane this is an unnecessary level of complexity that does not make the game better it just makes it annoying and hard to understand for an average person coming into the game cc is cc yeah and that's what i'm saying it's convoluted as well it speaks for all cats that's just a take from someone who doesn't like it. Personally, I find retail gameplay great. Well, like, am, am, you, you can attack the messenger all you want. In this case, me. You can try to discredit my take because of my, my preferences. But, like, is the take wrong? Do you think, that, do you think the take is wrong? If, if there was a total reset, do you think a lot of people would quit? I do. I do. I, I, I really do. I really do. I think so. Casuals? Now, actually, actually um, even, even, even though people would quit i think a lot of new people would take this chance to come and try it for the first time or maybe old people that quit in the past would come back i'll, t I'll tell you like if there was a total retail wow reset i would be more inclined to log in and play it personally as someone that's not already playing it now because it's totally clean slated right i think I, I, there would be a certain amount of people that are coming back but also there would be people that, that are quitting. I, th I think it goes both ways. And it, it and I really do think it most certainly would go both ways. Um, to say my take is wrong, I think is crazy because we all know that the World of Warcraft sub count has been going down for 15 years. 
Like, th like that's not even controversial. World of Warcraft sub count has been going down for 15 years. So to act like if there was a reset that, that people wouldn't quit, that's crazy. The game, the game has been shrinking in, in player in player count for 15 years now. So, uh, so obviously something is something is wrong, right? Yeah, I, I, I kind of do. Like, I'm not really playing the game hardcore right now. You, you're right, and and that's that. This is my perspective as like more of a casual player now. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of people that feel the way that I do. Very significant, uh, absurdly representative, yes. commensurately true subsampling of tweets, Full which off. obviously represents the entire World of Warcraft mm -hmm. community. Yeah, full on, like, walking around the street and picking random people. Like, this is what, yeah. this, is. This, is what this is. It's like, this is what, it feels like a half measure. Mm -hmm. Even though, from creation, it isn't in any capacity designed to be that. It's not supposed to, it just feels this way. So certainly, I, I, especially with, now, obviously, a lot of these people are people who are not gameplay oriented. Hyper-prioritizing mm -hmm. gameplay in a manner that undermines player experience with chosen fantasy of the RPG elements for the RPG is otherwise an ongoing detriment to the game. We don't want to have class skins to change the experience of our spells. They don't need to serve gameplay, just visuals. We just want different colored spells and cool pets. I'm gonna say it. I think it'd be really cool if you could have a Death Knight that could do combat on a mount. I think that'd be really cool. And they Ooh. can't wear plate armor anymore. They do, you, do you think some people are attracted to classes and specs that are known to be bad? And like their, their identity, their RPG, MMORPG ident identity is like being the underpowered thing. The, it's like, like, like I, and I, th I think, I think of Red Paladins in Vanilla WoW. Everyone knows Red Paladins fucking suck, but there is a huge identity. There is a huge amount of loyalty to that spec because it, it, it's, it's like so, they, those people want to be the underdog spec or something. Also, also, I, th I think of Warlocks in Vanilla WoW. Warlocks are not so great. They're not the best DPS. Generally, you only bring one, maybe two of them to your forty-man raid. But I, like, there's there's a huge like warlock identity. Dru Druids, fuck man, Druids in Vanilla WoW, they're not like that great. Very very situationally relevant, I guess. But there's a huge dru a Druid identity in Vanilla WoW, despite not being the best. Um, and so I think maybe maybe perfect maybe perfect balance where all of the specs are balanced perfectly like we saw a moment ago, um, maybe that sort of robs people of the ability to be that underdog spec. And maybe some people just want to be sort of the underpowered underdog. And they're on this like never ending journey to kind of prove themselves. Uh, balance and classic was worse. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's my point. That's my point. Cl class balance and classic wow fucking sucks, which gives people the opportunity to be that underdog on a mission to prove themselves, and that's their identity. Is they're the like, I th I think there's something to that. I think that some people just like that. Some people like that a lot, and I think maybe in retail you don't have much of an opportunity for that type of gameplay. They need to wear wear mail armor. Yeah, that would be awesome. Now, are they ever going to do that? Probably not. But that's the kind of stuff that I'd want to see too. But it's just like this kind of stuff doesn't get. I mean, same thing in retail. Yeah, but yeah, but not yeah, but not at all though, right? Um, like, let me let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is let's talk 95th percentile. This is retail DPS class balance, and this is let's go let's go take a look at vanilla. Let's take a look at vanilla. This is this is vanilla WoW DPS class balance. Uh, hold up. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this season? Of, yeah, this is season of discovery. How do I do? Am I not on vanilla? Hold up. What the fuck? It's giving me season of discovery stats rather than. I just want like. Yeah, maybe I. Okay, okay. Sorry, here I scrolled on classic era. Okay, uh, yeah, let's do classic era. Uh, da, 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 boss damage DPS. Are you ready for it? This is this is it. So so yeah. <laughs> so this is retail WoW class balance, and this is vanilla WoW class balance. Okay, so this is kind of what I'm talking about. But some some people really really like to be the underdog DPSer or the underdog class, and they're on a mission to prove themselves, and hey, I can do it. Hey, Red Paladin isn't actually that bad, and I'm going to spend the next 10 years of my life trying to prove to you that Red Paladin isn't bad, or Elemental Shaman, or DPS Priest, or uh, do you need a raid for Nomer tonight, 7 p.m. server time? Oh, yeah, I do actually on my Boomkin. Uh, when is that? When is 7 p.m. server time? 
I always have a hard time remembering. Uh, oh, yeah. Yo, can I go on my Boomkin? Sardako? I need, a, I need a Boomkin DPS spot tonight. So that is three hours. Th okay, three hours from now, which is 6 p.m. my time. Okay. I, I will be there. We got the Sardako content. Okay, nice. Thank you. Thank you for offering. That's exactly what I need. Three hours from now. Boomkin raid. Hell yeah. Hold up. Let me take a look. How do Boomkins do? Huh. No, I'm kidding. This is vanilla. Wow. What about Season of Discovery? Uh, boss damage. Season of Discovery. Boomkin is middle of the pack. Yo, if you guys want to see some middle of the pack DPS later tonight, this is the place to be. Get added into the game because it's not... <clears throat> It, it, it's 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 not balanced basically and i think that again the game is like so hyper optimized by people that play it professionally that you're never going to have cool fun things like that added into the game Ooh. but as far as i can tell from looking at them i mean aug think about augmentation and how much problems that created cool? like can i just fucking look cool which is you're gonna get a lot of a problem right where mm -hmm. this is gameplay design that is smuggled in under the aesthetic change? Yes. Well, that's what it feels like. We want the aesthetic change. I think, I think what, what I will say, if I'm going to plant my flag in the ground mm -hmm. in this one, is I think class skins would be absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. I did not expect class skins. I am not disappointed that we're not getting class skins. I'm going to be honest. I could care less about that. Maybe I'm weird, but I think it would be cool if you had new spells that you could opt into. That'd be cool. Like, class skins, like, yeah, that's nice. Like, you should add that too. But, like, whenever I'm a mountain thane, I want to do, like... I want to have it to where, like, my Heroic Leap does more damage than a Mortal Strike, because that would be really cool. I realistically think that they probably have a lot of artists working on big features for Midnight. I think that Class Games Midnight is take, cool. uh, like, animation department. Mm -hmm. I know that they have a pretty damn heavy workload. One of both. As they Good update point. all of the mounts, or at least as many as they can do. So, like, yes, m oh, you know, more things in the best way possible would be great. Obviously, 10.2.6 is uh, player housing. I have this weird, this is another like problem I have with retail, I guess. I actually genuinely do like completionism type of content. I like to do that. But when I think about that type of content in retail, wow, it's just so, it seems like such an insurmountable task. It seems like I am, I am just always going to be behind other people. And I am, I am, I am, there's so much to collect and to achieve that I am, it's just like so overwhelming that it's like, what's the point, right? There's just too fucking much. There's too much. And I mean, that's, that's just the, the nature of a, of a 20 year old MMO. I, I don't know. I don't know what else you can do about that. That's totally surprise confirmed. <laughs> um, but I'm still, you know, I'm not going to be like, well, because it's not the best version of what it could be. I hate it. Cause as I look at this, I'm like, you know what? Sure. That seems like, well, and also people are saying the mountain thing seems like it's not fun. Okay, imagine if Shockwave was your main ability, and it actually did, like, a rumbling, like, Earth. Do you have to have everything? Zolshi, can I say something here? Every single critique or complaint about Retail WoW that I have made, Asmongold has made, or anyone else in the chat has made, you're just, like, completely shouting it down. And it's funny because every single year for the last 15 years, fewer and fewer people are playing Retail WoW. Like, may maybe concerns that people have actually have some merit given that fewer people are playing every single year right maybe shouting down people's concerns or just like sort of oh well that doesn't matter oh well this uh, that's that that concern doesn't matter maybe that's like actually not the best approach right and i will it doesn't matter well like the, like the game is shrinking in player volume every single year for 15 years now and I'll, I'll give you a counter example. If someone came to me and said, stay safe, I don't really like Classic WoW because it's just too easy. I, I'm looking for a more mechanically complex uh, dungeon and raid experience. And that's why I don't like Classic. You know what I would say? I'd say, yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, Classic is probably not the game for you. Yeah, because Classic... And so like, there's, there's nothing wrong with just saying, yeah, you know what? Yeah, like if that's what you're looking for, then this game is probably not for you or whatever. <clears throat> but this like, this like online defense force refusing to acknowledge any single fault in the game or if someone brings up a concern saying oh well that might be true but it doesn't matter that's like are you like on the payroll are you getting paid to, de to defend the game <laughs> like like what it's like it's like it's like it's like fucking paid shill status 
I hope you're getting paid every time you you dismiss someone's critique about retail. Why? Seriously, seriously. Imagine if you had like the kind of like the uh, the Diablo three barbarian leap thing, where it would create an earthquake under you. Uh, imagine if you had upheaval. Like I I feel like there's tons of things like that. Thunderclap. Yeah, exactly. It's just annoying all the retail hate. Do you think that I am blindly hating on retail, or or do you think that I'm just sort of raising my concerns about the game and I'm articulating why it's currently not of interest to me? Like, like, like you mean I'm getting paid to hate on retail? I talk about retail once every eight months. I'm not I'm not getting paid to hate on retail. What are you ta- What are you talking about? And they're, they're like, there's to be clear. Also, like, why 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 are you getting mad or upset? It's annoying if people hate on retail. Why do you care? Who care? Like, are, are you upset that people don't like the same things that you like? Why does that bother you if people don't like the version of World of Warcraft that you like? Why does it matter? If someone, if someone prefers Pepsi to Coca-Cola, does that make you mad if you're a Coca-Cola guy? No, your concerns about Coca-Cola are wrong. It's like, huh? This is just like weird, weird corporate loyalty weird hyper consumer corporate loyalty now you're not allowed to critique anything that i it's like this is this is not this is not it okay this is i think you need to like detach from a little bit from the products that you're consuming thank you thank you thank you tampa hi good afternoon good afternoon like why not be able to like have a like you know for example if you're a mountain thing you can only use a hammer maybe i don't know i think that stuff would be really cool and if you do that, you can like call down like a lightning strike. You know how like a uh, Captain America did on like uh, Thanos and Endgame. Like that'd be fucking awesome. A cool way of letting me lean into some different things for my, you know, for, for my, uh, my classes. And I also respect Thor? that they're doing it in a yeah, way I mean, where obviously they're not Thor. kind yeah. of committing to infinite vertical progression uh, of the talent trees. Mm-hmm. So uh, like, for Master? me overall, yeah. I'm like this seems reasonable and positive. Yeah. Because that's what it is in isolation from expectation. Yes. Yes. It's the problem of expectation brings the satisfaction yeah. of the quotas. It's like, it just, it, 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 you go, I would have liked Claskins. You're like, you brought Claskins to the table. No one ever said Claskins. No one was ever vaguely considering it, but you brought it to the table. Thus, <clears> being <throat> disappointed is on you. But also, I think players can be, it, it's fair for players to be disappointed whenever they think that they're getting one thing and they're not getting it. Like, I would say, yeah, for sure, that's totally fair. And also, like, whenever people aren't getting something, then maybe Blizzard should look at why do people still, why does why is it that everybody wants this thing? So, yeah, I, I think that people are right to complain about it. But I, I think that the, the real problem with WoW is, like, just on a fundamental level, the way that the game is designed. Like, the game is designed in a way that is built completely around optimization and min-maxing. And it, that's happened because you have 15 years of optimization and min-maxing. And like in Classic WoW, it's not as bad. It's still there, but it's not as pronounced. It's not as important. There's a reality of if your players are disappointed, then that is your problem to deal with as a developer. Which is really annoying. Yes. But it's also literally true. Like, how do you deal with this? Uh. People say it's like every MMO now. I think that every MMO is always going to be about min-maxing to an extent. But the levels of min-maxing that WoW has are outside of the game, and I think it makes the game worse. So, like, this is maybe a really unpopular take, but I wish Blizzard would disable the functionality of every single add-on in every single capacity. No add-ons. Period. Literally. I think this is a... You, you would have to fundamentally change the way you were designing the game, because at this point, the game is designed in such a way... Like, the the... The game is designed around the knowledge that people have add-ons, right? I guess you could say the game is over-designed because people have add-ons that trivialize so much of what is being put into the game. And so as such, it's sort of, it's like, a, it's like a fucking arms race, right? Okay, people have this add-on that can trivialize this type of content or this type of mechanics. So we need to make these mechanics more complex, more complex, more... And it just it just keeps getting out of out of control. I think that that has been the case to a large degree. Um, and so you would you would have to fundamentally change the way that you approach World of Warcraft game design if you were to shut down add-ons. It it is it is very very weird that if you want to play World of Warcraft at a I was going to say high level, but like really at an above average level. If you want to play retail WoW at an above average level. And you really do, you need to have add-ons. You need to have third-party add-ons, plugins, weak auras in order to play effectively. 
that's weird. And that's, that's also, that's also unique to world. Of, I, I can't think of any other game that necessitates third party software or weak auras or plugins in order to be competitive. In fact, in, in, in most other games, if you're doing that, it's considered cheating and you're going to get banned. Right. Um, and so it is, it is, uh, it is a very weird dynamic. I think in my, in my, you know, I'm not, now I'm not talking specifically about World of Warcraft, but if you were to conceive your dream MMO, if you're going to fantasize about the perfect MMO, there would be no add-ons. Don't you think that's true? If we pivot the conversation away from World of Warcraft and more to the, to a conceptual perfect 10 out of 10 dream MMO, there would not be add-ons. Add-ons I think are just generally not good. Maybe nece maybe necessary for the state of World of Warcraft as it is now, but I think ideally it's just not the best case scenario. It's sort of like an archaic thing, I guess. It's a holdover from t from two thousand four. Please zero add-ons. No API reading. You can't do that mm -hmm. uh, unless, like you know, for example, you know, you're running some sort of like cheat engine or something like that. Like the whole fixation on like Warcraft. Like I think that I, I raided in WoW. I started raiding in. I'd keep damage meters. Well, okay. World of Warcraft also has a 20-year history of uh, Blizzard of taking good add-on ideas and integrating them into the game itself, right? So a lot a lot of really smart, uh, helpful add-ons have been, the ideas have been taken by Blizzard and then just put into the game so that you don't need the add-on anymore. Uh, a really old example of this is the uh, is the combat log. When World of Warcraft came out in 2004, there was no combat log. You had no, you had no way to, to see how much the mob hit you for or how much you hit the mob or how much you were healed for. There was an add-on that did that for the first couple months. And then Blizzard said, hey, you know what? It's probably a good idea to not necessitate a combat log add-on. We're going to add a combat log to the game itself. And so a lot of the very basic things like maybe a damage meter or healing meter, threat meter, if you, ha if you even have threat, I guess. I'm not a fan of threat. I think it's a bad mechanic. But it, that's a different conversation. Uh, like, like may maybe a damage meter, for instance, would just be something that is built into the game and can be toggled on and off, right? Things like that. Really vanilla, but like I started like seriously raiding in, in, in TBC. And the difference in gameplay after, like before and after parses became the culture of the game was night and day. What would exist in place of threat? Retail WoW has better threat mechanics than classic WoW. I, 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 in, in so far as like th threat is pretty much non-existent. If, if you are a tank, you have threat. If you're not a tank, you just kind of don't have it, right? It's just like really not a mechanic that is super concerning. It's, it's not really that impactful in the game in retail. Well, um, no, no, nowhere near as much as it is in classic. Well, wow. like you, like you're not having DPS pumping too hard and, uh, staring at the threat meter. Oh, I need to stop DPS and wait for my tank to do more threat. So I'm just going to stand here for three seconds or I need to pop a lip or I'm going to whatever. Right. That's not a thing in retail. Well, wow. so threat, threat is nowhere near as impactful. And so I'm trying to think like, does, does threat or being threat capped make the game more fun from the tank point of view or the DPS point of view. I don't really think that it adds fun. I just think it sort of adds frustration. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it makes the game more fun or more enjoyable. Um, and then, and then you can ask, okay, what, like then if, if not threat, then what is the function of a tank? And I think the function of a tank is to survive position mobs correctly and then beyond that just do damage right be tanky don't die manage defensive cooldowns position mobs where they need to be okay set the mobs up where they need to be and then two then then if after fulfilling those two roles then you're doing damage right and then there's there's no threat component at all i think that's fine and so and by the way that's what retail tanking is that's ex what i just what i just described that's retail tanking to a t and so you know, I'm not, I'm not a guy that's like, oh, classic is better than retail in every single way. No, like, I, th I think, I think there are, uh, I think there are really good things about retail. Um, in, in fact, I think, I think it's probably worth mentioning, like, why, why I prefer classic to retail at all. And for me, it's, it's like, what, what, what am I looking for in an MMO? What does classic WoW do? Vanilla WoW, what does it do that no other version of WoW does? And the, the most simple way I can put that is it's the world immersion. It's, it's the degree to which the world makes you feel immersed and the degree to which the world necessitates, encourages, um, incites interpersonal contact, interplayer um, uh, interactions in the world. The world feels alive. The world feels very, very social. 
The world feels very immersive. You can get sucked into it. And no other version of WoW, TBC, Wrath, any other version of WoW, makes me feel the same way. And so, and by the way, like 90% of what I value is that. It's the world immersion value, okay? And so if you're talking, oh, well, Retail WoW has really cool class balance. You should try it out. Guess what? If there's no world, I don't, I don't care. Class balance is like 2% of what I care about. Seriously, or, or, or class rotation. Or, oh, but the dungeons are really good. You should try it out. Yeah, well, if there's no world, I don't care. Yeah, but, yeah, but the raids are awesome. You should try. The BGs are cool. The, the arena is awesome this season. If there's no world, I just don't give a fuck. I don't know. Like, I just don't. All of, the, all of these other things are like little side version mini games. The main game is the world. It's the immersion. And so, you know, like, I, 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 can, I can admit, I think that, I think that uh, you know, Wrath of the Witch King has way better class balance and talent trees than Vanilla WoW. Guess what? There's no world. It's dead. The game is sit in, Dal in Dalaran and uh, do a dungeon, do a heroic, do a BG, and log out. I, I, like, it's not, it's not enough. It's not enough just despite the class balance and the class rotations being way better. It's not enough. Um, TBC, I think, has better raids, like generally speaking, than Vanilla does. The, the arena is cool too. It's awesome. It's not enough. I don't care. There's no world. It's dead. doesn't matter, right? And so... I don't know. That's 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 what I, as an MMO gamer, that's what I'm looking for. Other people value different things, obviously, but that's that's my reason, at least. That's my logic. Like, back in the day, you would have people that were really good at doing mechanics, and they were considered the best players in the guild. And now, it's all about who's doing the most damage. And this is, like, just in general, if you're doing a pug or you're doing something like that. People always cared about damage, but, like, that wasn't the end-all and be-all. In the same way that, like, now... Like, I, I haven't played in, like, the last, like, year, like, super seriously. But whenever I played before then, I'm assuming it's probably about the same now, people are playing for parses more than they're playing to kill the boss. Extremely good communication and doing the right thing at all times. Which is kind of the problem. So let's take a look at Dark Ranger, then. Dark actually, just before you oh. say that, actually, like, that's a good point, um, Pablo. It takes away from the chance of us getting Paskins. Like a battle for goodness. Yeah, yeah. It's like this. Th th this is not. A, Fair. That's a good point. There, there is overlap between this and Plaskins, which now means because this has happened, we're substantially less likely to get Plaskins. Mm -hmm. Almost completely unlikely to get them because you're not going to get a Dark Ranger skin that changes all your stuff to Dark Ranger if you've got a Dark Ranger ability called Black Arrow. That's there, and that's one of the that's one of the other problems where it's still like, Plaskins were never even brought to the table as like a possibility ever, but it's just. We've wanted it, expected it so long. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just some people have made really cool looking uh, bits yeah. of art and put them in Reddit, and everyone's like, oh, look at that. And then yeah. all the artists at Blizzard have probably thought, oh, that look at cool. that. And then their producers and team are like, yeah, but you know, um, we sort of it's have not going to happen, though. Yeah. <laughs> Slight problem. It's sad that people are already disappointed about the new expansion, but this is kind of what happened with Shadowlands and Covenants is that like Blizzard kind of pushed something in that like players didn't want to have, and they were just like, yeah, it doesn't really matter. We're going to do this anyway. Like, your video? Yeah, I think so, too. I'll go ahead and uh, give it a like. I don't know why I'm not subscribed to the Bell Your Equips channel. That's weird. You know, you know... Can I give you a, a, give you a real quick take on Dragonflight? I have heard from so many people that Dragonflight is actually really pretty good. From start to finish, like, Dragonflight... I've heard from a lot of a lot of pe people people whose opinions on WoW I trust and value that Dragonflight is pretty good. And so I'm thinking, you know, what's what's the problem with with Dragonflight? Like what like what what has turned people off? What has turned people away from Dragonflight? Cuz Dragonflight, you know, if you compare a raid participation in Dragonflight to raid participation or mythic plus participation in, in earlier versions of the world, just the last expansion, the one before, it's not as popular, right? What's the problem? I think, and maybe I'll get in trouble for saying this. I think Dragonflight from day one, from the day it was announced, had an optics issue. And I think the optics issue was Dragonflight was marketed. And by the way, like it's, it's not even necessarily true if you're just playing the game, but the marketing, the promotion pushed this game as being gay, as being very very flamboyantly progressive like that's sorry that's just the truth and so i think that look, look at who 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 plays who plays mmos it's like 30 year old guys 35 year old dudes and you can say for better or for worse you can say it's a good thing it's a bad thing i think that a lot of mmo guys are just like oh you know what maybe this one's not for me right and you can say oh well they're being aggressive oh they're being and you know what maybe they are maybe they are but also, I think this is—I think this has played played a played a role in it. 
And like, I played Dragonflight for a month when it came out. You know, I do think it was marketed in a very sort of like uh, progressive gay way. Um, and some people say it's good. Some people say it's bad. That's fine. Playing the game, I never, I noticed that in the marketing, but playing the game, if you're just, if you're just logged in playing, you don't even notice that. You don't even, it's like, it's like the, the, the game being marketed that way wasn't true to the game experience. Just if you're logged in playing, you don't, you don't feel any of that or see any of that, but most certainly it was marketed that way. And I think for better or for worse, I'm not, I'm not giving an opinion. I just, I think, I think that's kind of what it was. I think that probably turned a lot of, of uh, 35 year old MMORPG gamers because right now over the last year or two, I think there's been a big recoil away from the insertion of social issues into video games. Do you think that's true over the last, over the last couple days? or sorry, over the last couple of years, I think that there has been a societal recoil away from, I don't want DEI in the video games. I don't want woke video games. I don't want, I don't want to feel like I'm being pandered to. I don't want to feel like there's a, there's a real world political agenda being inserted into the game. I'm tired of that. And so I, th I think that that actually played into why from day one, I think that people kind of took a, took a step away from Dragonflight. I think so. And you can say for better or for worse, I'm not giving an opinion on that, but I think, I think that that probably is phenomenally, phenom phenomenally true. I think so. Uh, it should be honestly break add-ons or the game won't be good anymore. Yeah. I genuinely <clears throat> think add-ons are bad for the game. And I actually, I don't think that it's a good idea to try to distinguish between good add-ons and bad add-ons. I think Final Fantasy 14 has got it right. Use add-ons, you're banned, period. If you want something in the game, then ask for it to be in the game. It adds to toxicity. Well, what it really does is like, so like it, you go back and like you look at this, right? So basically the add-ons create a bigger gap between the worst and the best players because you have the worst players that are down here and you're never going to get bad players that are new to the game to download add-ons because they're new to the game and they're bad players. I saw someone in the chat say, what are you talking about? So. I, I can kind of give you like like an image of what I'm talking about. A lot of RPG, MMORPG players, 35-year-old guys, these are people that grew up with Lord of the Rings, with D&D, &D, games like this, and they're looking for like a dark medieval Tolkien-esque type of fantasy universe, right? Which is what World of Warcraft originally was, and uh, other MMOs are to this day. And you look at the way that Dragonflight was marketed, and once again, okay, you can say for better or for worse, that's up to you to decide, but you cannot deny the game, the way the game was marketed was strong female characters. And then here, and then you're, and then these are the, then introducing the Drakthir. Introducing the, and it's like, I just think that this is probably not what a lot of MMORPG gamers are looking for. You have the gender androgynous dragons. You have, I just, I think this is not what a lot of, M, what you have rainbow magic. <clears throat> I think it probably turned a lot of people away from the game. I'm sorry. And you can say, oh, well that's, you know, fuck those people. Yeah, sure. Those people are regressive. You know what? We'll call them whatever you want. Sure. Regardless, I think that probably happened to some degree. Just by the nature of the fact of what they are, <laughs> means that they're not going to do this kind of content. So the difference really should be from, let's say, uh, from here to here. But instead, the difference in skill is from here to here. And this is a much bigger difference, right? Because you look at the level of awareness that, like, let's say this guy has with his UI, and this level of awareness is incredible. Like, the amount of tools and resources that he has to make himself a better player are just astronaut- like, a good play, like somebody without add-ons would not be able to have this much information. They might be able to keep like- <gasps> Dude, Stay Safe TV is live. Nice. Maybe a third of it in their head. But like that's also taking mental awareness away from what's happening in the game at like a second to second level. <laughs> so what ends up happening is that good players keep getting better and bad players stay the same. Because bad players get rotated in and out because they're always new players. So, like, the skill cap for somebody who's played the game for 10 years, who's continuously iterated and gotten better at the game, well, guess what? Those people are going to continuously get better and better and better, and the new players aren't, 
And then whenever the content keeps getting designed for these really, really good players, then the, the bad players aren't going to have anything to do. And this is actually like a really great example is that like Elden Ring is a great example of how Blizzard or sorry, uh, From Software didn't make this mistake. Because Elden Ring is not that much harder than Dark Souls 3. It's not like a tremendous massive skill gap. Yeah, they've got a couple of bosses that are really hard. Like, for example, Melania. Melania is very hard. But other than that, it's actually quite an easy game in a lot of cases, especially if you look for outside resources and you use all the tools that are available to you. I think, I think that the difficulty of Elden Ring depends on your individual playthrough. Because it is, it is like if you're if you're banging your head against a wall, against a boss, over and over and over again, and you just cannot beat the boss, just go farm levels for eight or, for eight hours or something, and then come and then come back the next day. You're just going to dunk out, right? If a boss really is too hard, you have the option just just go hyper farm, go grind, go grind, go grind, and then just come back, just be over leveled, and then you're just going to fucking stop the boss. And you can do that with every single boss in the game, with every single one of them, you can. So why is it that they did that? And a lot of people criticized. Uh, Elden Ring, and they said that it's too easy. Well, of course it's too easy for you, Mr. I've done Dark Souls 1 17 times. I've beaten Dark Souls 3 9 times. I played Bloodborne 3 times. I've beaten Sekiro. Big fucking surprise, the new game is also easy for you. But the reality is that if you just keep upping the ante and making the game harder and harder and harder, you end up alienating just like the average player. And I think that's what's happened. Uh, I think that's kind of what happened with Lost Ark, too, uh, to be honest with you. And even more so, that's what happened with WoW. Because Lost Ark just got harder fights. And also, uh, WoW, a lot of the skill level and like the awareness that people have in the game is artificial. And that's, I think, the biggest problem. The biggest problem is the fact that the skill level in the game that people have and the level of awareness that they have isn't real. It's artificial. It's because they have a lot of add-ons. It's because they have tools that increase their awareness. It's because... Wait, you need skill on Lost Ark. You need the skill to open up your wallet and get out your credit card. That takes a lot of skill. They have a uh, like an add-on that tells them to move whenever they're supposed to move. So it's it's not even that like it's like good players are not only good players because they have better awareness. They also have add-ons, and those add-ons act as like a multiplier for how much better they are than a bad player. Get good. Well. I mean, I, I wish Blizzard would get good and make the game better. Like, it's not about, like, getting good at the game. Like, it is only a video game, right? And, like, being good at the video game doesn't matter, and there's no impact or meaning in it at all. There's no light at the end of the tunnel where all of the time that you've invested into the game is going to matter. It'll never matter. It's just a video game. So, at the end of the day, the video game should be fun. And it's if the video game isn't fun, then it doesn't matter if it's hard or not. Mm -hmm. Because people spent so much time saying, get good. Well, now nobody cares if you're good. Nobody cares if you're good in Arena. Nobody cares if you're good True. in Mythic Plus. True. The world first race is popular for a week, and then nobody cares about that either. That's it. So that's what happens whenever you spend 15 years telling people to get good, is people just instead play good games. I, I, I really do think that if you, if you let ego gamers call the shots in your game like if you if you cater to hyper sweat 0.01 percent of the of the community ego gamers if you if you let those people dictate the direction of a game your game is just going to be fucking dead the game is over right i think really i mean we've we've sort of gone down this uh we've had this conversation a lot this is not an IQ bell curve, we can call this the gamer skill bell curve, okay? So this is this is your average, okay? Average gamer. These are your top, top skill gamers. And then these people, uh, they suck, these guys down here, okay? Most gamers are just kind of average. Most gamers are average. And so I, I really do think, you know, if you want your game, your video game, whatever genre of game it is, if you want your game to be as, as appealing and as popular and successful as it possibly can be, you want to design your game to appeal to these people, right? Because that's where most people are. If you are designing your game around these, around these people, if you're dictating the direction of the game around these people, your top cutting edge gamers, then everyone to the left is like probably going to feel pretty isolated. 
that and that's that's just like pretty much true these people aren't even good enough to play these people maybe don't care enough to play and these people are sitting there stroking their dick oh yeah dude i'm so good ah oh, yeah ah oh, yeah and it's like well hey guess what hey, guess what the game's dead guess what the guess what the game is fucking dead now great the game is dead because all of these people fucking quit and that is kind of the way that it goes that's the issue and i think that's what's happened with wow they get good games yeah exactly uh, some people uh, get paid because they're good too. Yeah, but they get paid a lot less than they would if there was a lot of people that cared about being good. The problem is that nobody cares about the quality of the game. And no, nobody cares about the skill in the game. Like, I think that you guys don't really... And you see this whenever we do like a... Uh, link the video. Yeah, I'll link it again. Um, <clears throat> whenever we do a tournament, there's guys like Zico <clears throat> that are so good that people don't even know how good they are. Like, it's literally like, oh, what's their power level? Dude, that's me. Oh my god. Is he talking about me? Oh my Asmon Gold. Asmon, come on, dude. You don't need to talk about me like that. You don't even know. Come on. That's how good they are. But that skill level is not even know how bad he is in like a wider gaming community <laughs> because the game hasn't fostered a casual audience to respect it. And it's sad. I think that's really the saddest thing about all of it. Is that like you have people that have invested like Peekaboo, like Venruki, Zico. Uh, see do like these are people <coughs> who are, like mm -hmm. as I said they're so good at the game Mez mm. they're so good at the game you don't even know how good they are and these are only just PV PvP players right I mean there's like raiders of course that are the same way and uh Zara you <laughs> the entire chat can I move my webcam people are spamming Swifty 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 true true Swifty true nuts yeah like dorky like he's fucking insane <laughs> Max is really good at the game, right? I mean, he's in the top guild. He's a raid leader of top guild. Like, he, he's, he's so good that people don't even know how good he is. Yummy? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Trill, 100% Sony. Yeah, a lot of these guys are insane. And the culture around gaming right now doesn't reward them for, for, for that level of skill. And it's sad. And this is the problem, right? Is that why would you want to play with somebody who's intentionally handicapping themselves? If add-ons make you better at the game and give you more awareness... Why would you want to play with a person who is using is is refusing to use something that makes them better at the game? It's the same reason why I don't bring rep paladins to raids. Like the only reason I do with McConnell Damn. is because it's McConnell. The truth is that for everybody else, like no, why would I bring somebody who's bad? Like if I see somebody who's not putting in their effort, I don't want to ever give that person. Like I, I feel like if you if you go into a raid and you are allowing some people to put in partial effort and other people not to uh, uh, not to put in partial effort. Well, then you create a reward structure around putting in partial effort. Dude, how funny would it be if there was a communist DPS log DPS meter plugin that, hear, hear, hear me out. There's a plugin you could have for this DPS meter that adds up all of the DPS and then divides it out equally. So everyone, everyone is at all times exactly the same on the DPS meter, right? And you, and you, and you could like toggle it on. And it just okay. All right, you're gonna take. We're gonna take off some of you. We're gonna put it down here. We're gonna. This guy's gonna. We need to just take some of that. Put that for this guy. And everyone is perfectly equal. Finally, it's balanced. Mm -hmm. And the people that are putting in full effort leave. Mm -hmm. The commie meter. So that's what happens. <laughs> you discriminate on rats. I discriminate on anybody that doesn't put in. Like if you're not enchanting your gear, if you're not performing well. Uh, if I know you, obviously I'm gonna give you special treatment because that's just the way it is. But um, yep. otherwise, no. I, I absolutely. I, I absolutely discriminate. Like, if somebody is is not like fully ready, or they're not like enchanted, or I don't feel like they're prepared, then yeah, fuck them. Fuck. So Asmgold takes a look at the WoW section, and okay, I'm number two in the WoW. This is he recorded this a couple days ago. I'm number two in the WoW section, and what am I doing? Uh, watching YouTube shorts. Everyone else here is playing, is actually playing the game, and of course. I'm sitting here scrolling fucking YouTube shorts. Uh huh. Fuck them. That's it. Uh, conditions players to Classic. play around uh, someone with a good streak more than someone with consistency hmm. around objectives. What about that, Joe yeah, Rogan? Yeah, I mean maybe. Hmm. Unprepared people need to go. Yeah. Why would you play with somebody who's unprepared? It's kind of common sense whenever you think about it. They waste people's time. Yeah, exactly. Of course you discriminate. They're wasting your time. Yeah, that's just that's just how it is. But anyway, yeah. I mean, I just think wow, like it's just there's just so much problems in the game, and there's just so much there's so much to the game. It's too much, man. It's just simply too much. Everything about it is too much. I can't believe it. Okay.